Thank you, Madam Chair. My family medical practice cares for marginalized patients, including those living in poverty, refugees, men out of prison or facing charges, the LGBTQ plus community, indigenous persons, and those struggling with mental health, addictions, chronic pain, and disabilities. I myself have experienced childhood racism, bullying, and sexual abuse. So I understand that the choice to die can easily be influenced by injustices that life has dealt us. At prior committees, I had raised concerns that inequalities and circumstances such as poverty, trauma, lack of timely access to medical lead to MAID being raised as a treatment option to such a victim of discrimination. I warned that many injuries and illnesses are accompanied by transient suicidality that ends with adaptation and support, but on average takes two years. But then the overwhelming majority of persons after those two years rate their quality of life as the same as aged matched healthy individuals. Offering MAID in a period of known increased suicidality would lead to premature deaths of those who would have recovered. Now Bill C-7 is legal. A man had a small stroke affecting his balance and swallowing. The patient was depressed and isolated due to COVID-19 outbreak on his ward. The stroke neurologist anticipated the man would be able to eat normally and regain most of his balance. He declined all therapy and psychiatry diagnosed him with an adjustment disorder, but they felt he would improve. However, he requested MAID. Neither of his MAID assessors had any experience in stroke rehabilitation and recovery. In this acute phase, while struggling with his mood and isolation, with no therapy to gauge his final level of function, he received MAID. He had no ter terminal illness, but due to the fact that he was adapting to a slightly thickened diet and so was temporarily slightly undernourished, they considered him track one eligible and he received made the following week. No safeguards were technically broken and yet he died when acutely down, isolated and had not experienced living with maximal recovery from his stroke. Mr. E.N. was a 71-year-old widower admitted to hospitals for falls. During his admission, he contracted C. difficile, an infectious diarrheal illness. He was openly humiliated by staff for the smell of his room. He developed new shortness of breath that was not comprehensively assessed. Without patient quest, request, a hospital team member raised and recommended made to him. The team said he had COPD and it held a terminal prognosis. The MAID procedure was booked by the hospital team before he even had a second assessment, and within 48 hours of his first assessment, he was dead. Post-mortem tests confirmed no significant COPD, and his family doctor also said he didn't have end-stage COPD, but no one had contacted her for collateral history. MAID was raised to this patient. There is no safeguard in Bill C-7 that forbids raising MAID, and the related amendment was voted down by the Senate. CAMAP has a document called Bringing Up MAID, and Susan McDonald had mentioned in this committee that MAID should be raised as part of the informed consent process. Was raised MAID because his admission was longer than expected, because he was a victim of ageism? Did he choose MAID because his acute care team made him feel horrible? His family believes so. The In Plain Sight BC report and the tragic story of Joyce Echequan demand that we take these considerations seriously. And lastly, after a CTV uh, W5 story showed a gentleman's maid provision, um, a patient, the immediate Monday, let me know that the story was super appealing and maid would be good for her. My patient is in her mid, early midlife, has a recent spinal cord injury, she hasn't had time to adjust, receive peer support or proper symptom control, nor reach maximal recovery, but she does now qualify for track two made within 90 days. The legislation is built in a way that allows for her death before she's had a chance to experience maximal recovery. 
This case also shows that the government must consider current suicide research that shows that messaging promoting suicide may lead to more people choosing that. The MAID regime appears to be allowing a right to die with government assistance for certain groups. Inadequate safeguards suggest that this has been packaged and thinly veiled as a medical procedure. If this is not the case, then I ask your government to reconsider its MAID regime. Thank you.